If they attack Caitlin Clark, their names are too going to be in the headlines. We saw dirty play after dirty play on Caitlin Clark, and still, Caitlin Clark is just such a class act. Angel Reese has been at the center of a major controversy lately, and today, we're diving into the truth behind her sudden switch from embracing the villain role to now trying to play the hero. Remember that Angel Reese doing all this? I'm the villain, I'm this, I'm that. Now she's whining. Again, I told you this was going to happen. I told you. After the I'm a gangster and then takes off all her clothes and then she's crying about being sexualized and then the season didn't go great for her because she can't make a layup. She's crying about being a victim again. Reese has always prided herself on being the bad guy. But recently, she's been attempting to rewrite the narrative and steal the spotlight from Caitlin Clark, who is undeniably the face of the WNBA. I don't understand how that Caitlin Clark is to blame for Angel Reese and everything that she experienced. It makes no sense to me. But let's not forget, no one even knew who Angel Reese was until she started coming for Caitlin Clark. So why is Reese suddenly claiming she's the victim? There is not a single grateful person I ever hear from in this league, and Angel Reese is a prime example of this. And how have players like Dijanai, Alyssa Thomas, and others tried to tear down Caitlyn while accusing her fans of racism? Let's break it all down, starting with Reese's ongoing attempts to twist the narrative and defame Clark. Angel Reese is saying the exact opposite of, I'll just embrace it, I'll be, I'll be the bad guy. I mean, maybe this is the long play of her actually embracing it and being the bad guy by posting something like this and we'll talk about her but in episode one of her podcast for the actual logo and the image that went along with the podcast there's caitlin clark on it caitlin clark's in the headline because of the clicks and here is angel reese getting clicks again angel reese has been trying to paint herself as the hero recently but let's not forget how everything started for months she has openly embraced being the villain of the wnba and I'll continue to take that on and be that for, the, for my teammates. And if I want to be that, and I know I'll go down to history, I'll look back in 20 years and be like, yeah, the reason why we watch in women's basketball is not just because of one person, it's because of me too. And I want y'all to realize that. In multiple interviews and statements, Reese proudly claimed she was fine with being the bad guy, even suggesting it made her more popular. She didn't shy away from the negative attention and fed into the drama surrounding her on-court behavior. But now, suddenly, She's flipping the script, saying people are unfairly trying to make her look like the villain and that she's being misunderstood. Angel Reese is saying, I am not the villain. If, if it's something that is, you know, on the court, fine, but overall, I would not consider myself to be the villain. At one point, she said she would take on the bad guy role if it meant growing women's basketball. This drastic shift has raised eyebrows, especially considering her past actions. Let's be clear. Reese's rise to fame didn't happen because of her skills alone. It was her confrontations with Caitlin Clark that put her in the spotlight. I think there's a jealousy factor there. She craves not just being the center of attention, not just having the cameras in the spotlight. She craves being the hero, not the villain. She's got to experience love. Everyone's got to be as crazy about Angel Reese as you are Caitlin Clark. Before that, Reese wasn't a household name and frankly, no one outside hardcore basketball fans even knew who she was. But the moment she targeted Caitlin, the real star of the WNBA, people started noticing her. What's a lesbian look like? Angry. You got the angry African-American lesbian who just can't handle somebody coming into their league as a white girl with a bunch of attention. And this is where it gets interesting, because Reese wasn't the only one. Players like Dijanai Carrington, Alyssa Thomas, and even Kennedy Carter tried to get in Caitlyn's way, knowing full well that Clark's massive fan base would bring them attention. You know, for whatever reason, they decide to get themselves involved, whether it is actually malintent or maybe they just want to get themselves in the headline. A lot of players got the spotlight this season because of Caitlin Clark, not to mention just overall Caitlin Clark brought millions, literally, more eyeballs to the league this season. This jealousy is at the heart of the issue. Caitlin Clark has been dominating the league, and it's no secret that she's stolen the spotlight. Her fan base is massive, and she's become the face of the WNBA. Her first playoff game, drawing 1.84 million viewers. Ridiculous numbers. But instead of celebrating Clark's success, players like Reese and others have been doing everything they can to tear her down. 
these lesbian angry OGs have milled around on the periphery of the sports world. And then we got Angel Reese's dumbass. Now, she's just stupid. I feel bad for Angel Reese. She's trying so hard to be something she's not, which is an intelligent human being. Whether it's through dirty plays on the court, false accusations, or stirring up controversy, they've all tried to shift the focus away from Caitlyn and onto themselves. There is not a single grateful person I ever hear from in this league. And Angel Reese is a prime example of this. In that post on social media, she said, I have never once had privilege in my life. Give me a break. Right. You are a God-gifted six-foot-three great athlete who had privilege throughout her youth athletic career, had privilege in high school as a great player, got to go on a full ride and make millions in NIL at LSU. You're one of the top picks in the top professional league in your sport, and now you are privileged everywhere you go. But here's the thing. It's not working. Fans see through this, and they know exactly what's going on. One of the most disturbing parts of this entire saga is how these players, including Reese, have tried to weaponize the issue of race. Players like Alyssa Thomas, Dejanai, and Reese herself have called out Caitlin Clark's fans, accusing them of racism simply for supporting their favorite player. Caitlin Clark has taken so much crap from so many types of players this season, pretty much on from every team she's faced. Players realize that if they attack Caitlin Clark, their names are too going to be in the headlines. But let's be real here. Caitlin's fans are defending her because she's being targeted. This isn't about race. It's about jealousy and frustration over the fact that Caitlin Clark has become the star these other players wish they were. But instead of working harder to raise their own game, they've resorted to name calling and false accusations to drag her down. Caitlin Clark came in and made such an impact on how many people started to care about the WNBA. This was the highest viewed season in the history of the league. Now, let's dive deeper into how Angel Reese and other players have actively tried to tarnish Caitlin Clark's reputation on and off the court. She actually pushed one of her opponents. This was after Suns forward Dewana Bonner was not called for a landing zone foul while stepping into Caitlin Clark's path after a three-point attempt. Caitlin Clark just really looked mad. I really enjoyed seeing the side of Caitlin Clark. It wasn't just Reese's taunting or trash talk that caught attention, but a calculated effort to discredit Clark at every turn. Take Dijonai Carrington, for instance. She's been one of the more aggressive players when it comes to confronting Caitlin Clark. Carrington has not only tried to physically challenge Clark during games, but has also been part of a larger narrative of players who try to undermine Clark's achievements. Caitlin Clark is just such a class act. She was incredible, breaking all types of records, and that's something she was certainly proud of. We saw lots of smiles on the court. There have been countless moments where Dijanai has thrown cheap shots, elbows, and attempted to get under Clark's skin. Yet, every time, it backfires, and Clark's fan base only grows stronger. And then we have players like Cheryl Swoops, who stepped into the controversy by twisting Caitlin Clark's stats. Caitlin is the face right now, and that's also good. Like, she's selling out gyms, mm -hmm. of course. Like, why would you hate against that? Instead of recognizing Clark's historic performances, Swoops has been vocal in questioning her skill and downplaying her record-breaking numbers. This is just another example of how Clark's success has become a target for those who can't stand to see her shine. Angel Reese has done something similar. While pretending to embrace her role as the villain, she has consistently downplayed Clark's abilities in interviews and public comments. Stop making it about anything other than the sport you love. Don't post anything what you feel about Caitlin Clark fans or new fans it, with racial slurs and racism and elections and this. Just then stop with that if you don't want it ever to be a part of that. But the moment you go down that road, you are opening yourself up to criticism yeah. from different people. And you must be okay with that. If you're not okay with it, then delete your social media profile. Reese and her crew seem to believe that if they can throw enough shade at Clark, the spotlight will shift away from her. But the reality is, all this drama has only made Caitlin Clark even more of a household name. Another player involved in this ongoing drama is Senedi Carter. She has been known for her physical style of play, but her run-ins with Caitlin Clark go beyond simple competition. Carter has been involved in moments that could easily be seen as attempts to intimidate or harm Clark. 
Whether it's the intentional hits or dangerous plays, Carter seems to be following the same playbook as Reese and Carrington. Use any means necessary to knock Clark off her game. We saw dirty play after dirty play on Caitlin Clark, and still, she just handled every single situation with the highest levels of dignity. But what's more interesting is that despite these attacks, Clark hasn't retaliated. Instead, she's remained focused and continued to dominate, refusing to be dragged down by their tactics. All of this leads to one undeniable truth. These players are jealous. Um, I think in my 11 year career, I'm, I've never experienced the, the racial comments from the Indiana Fever fan base. This has nothing to do with Caitlin Clark or Caitlin Clark's fans, at least. I think it has to do with the fact that there has been these racial undertones uh, because of the narrative put forth by reporters or people that want to create more drama to increase ratings. Maybe the media is the one that should be called the villain more than anybody else. They are not just jealous of Caitlin Clark's incredible skills, but also of the recognition and respect she has earned from fans and the media. No Caitlin Clark now for the WNBA playoffs means what? Caitlin Clark fans are no longer going to watch the WNBA. It is bad news for the WNBA that she's not continuing to play. Caitlin Clark's rivalry with Reese resonated. Caitlin Clark just had a playoff series like Magic Johnson. Clark's performances have overshadowed everyone else in the league and it's clear that Angel Reese and her allies feel threatened by that. They want the spotlight, but instead of earning it through their own hard work, they've chosen to create conflict and drama in an attempt to shift the narrative. There's a league with players that feel like they should be getting the attention. Now they have center stage, but the ratings are going to go down. Are they going to be pointing fingers and blaming Indiana Fever fans and Caitlin Clark fans whenever the ratings don't stay the same? Yeah, they will. Unfortunately for them, it hasn't worked and Clark remains the face of the WNBA. Hey, look at the numbers everywhere else across women's basketball. It's not just Caitlin Clark, it's all of us. And then the moment the ratings tank, they're gonna come back and say, see, well, we were right all along. Uh, it's all the racists that follow Caitlin Clark yeah. that were watching the product and now they're gone and we're back with our diehards. It is bad news for the WNBA that she's not continuing to play. Now let's talk about the broader implications of Caitlin Clark's rise and the jealousy that comes with it. It's undeniable that Clark has brought a massive wave of attention to the WNBA, attention that the league hasn't seen in years. Before Clark, the WNBA struggled to capture mainstream interest, with most of its stars barely breaking into the wider sports conversation. Players like Angel Reese, Alyssa Thomas, Dejanai Carrington, and even Duwana Bonner, despite their skills, weren't household names outside of niche basketball circles. But Caitlin Clark changed all of that. Caitlin Clark was the gift that kept on giving. Absolutely 1,000% kept on giving. And while she was doing this, I told you that even boys, men, are going to figure out, hey, wait a second, I'm kind of digging this. Not for her looks, not Angel Reese taking off her topper, or showing her ass, or whatever she's doing. No, Caitlin Clark's game resonated. Caitlin Clark's rivalry with Reese resonated. It resonated with me, which means it resonates with men. Real men. Clark's arrival in the WNBA shifted the entire landscape. Her electrifying performances, clutch shots, and fearless attitude have drawn in not just die-hard basketball fans, but casual viewers as well. She's brought new energy to the league, packing stadiums, increasing television ratings, and even making headlines on major sports networks. I was wrong about the impact that Caitlin Clark was going to have on the WNBA. For the first time in years, people are talking about the WNBA, and it's all thanks to Caitlin Clark. It's this very attention, however, that has caused tension and jealousy among other players. Angel Reese, who once reveled in playing the bad guy, has tried to flip the script now that she sees Caitlin Clark becoming the face of the league. I did not think it was possible that one player could come in and basically quadruple the ratings. But it's not just Reese. Many players, like Alyssa Thomas, who barely managed to gather a social media following before, are now grasping at straws to stay relevant. Thomas, Dejanai Carrington, and even players like Senedi Carter have tried to make Caitlin Clark's success about race, accusing Clark's fans of being racist simply because they're defending their favorite player. 
Caitlin Clark, in terms of pro team sports impact, is the single most influential athlete that I have ever seen in my life. What these players fail to acknowledge is that Clark's fans are reacting to the constant attacks on her, not because of race, but because of the clear and deliberate attempts to tear down her success. Instead of focusing on building their own legacies and careers, many of these players are focused on tearing Clarks down. It's become obvious that the only reason players like Angel Reese, Alyssa Thomas and Dejan I are getting any recognition now is because of their association with Caitlin Clark, whether it's through feuds or controversy. Caitlin Clark, 25.6 rebounds, 9 assists. The last rookie in NBA, WNBA playoff history to reach these numbers was Magic Johnson. Before Caitlin Clark, these players weren't in the headlines. Their games weren't filling arenas, and their social media followings were a fraction of what Clark's is today. But now, because they're constantly trying to challenge Clark, they've been thrust into the spotlight. Magic Johnson was great. He could do everything. Caitlin Clark just had a playoff series like Magic Johnson did way back in his rookie year. The jealousy stems from the fact that Caitlin Clark has done something they couldn't. She's revitalized the WNBA. And instead of recognizing her contributions to the league, these players have chosen to stir up drama, falsely accusing Clark's fans of racism and making her the target of their frustrations. The irony is, without Caitlin Clark, the WNBA would still be struggling for relevance, and these players wouldn't even be in the conversation. Her game resonates with people in basketball and across the country because she's got that edge. She plays with a flair, but she's got that edge. The hands go up. Clark's presence has made them more relevant, yet they continue to bite the hand that feeds them. In the end, it's clear that Caitlin Clark has not only changed the game on the court, but has also reshaped the narrative surrounding the WNBA. She's brought the league back to life, attracting new fans and giving it the spotlight it desperately needed. It was such a bittersweet end to a phenomenal rookie season that Caitlin Clark had. And it honestly got me to just reflecting on this season. And it sucks that so much of it was riddled with so much drama and so much negativity and so many mishaps that the WNBA had throughout the entire season. Meanwhile, players like Angel Reese, Alyssa Thomas, Dejanai Carrington and others have chosen to feed into drama and jealousy instead of focusing on their own growth. I've never experienced the racial comments from the Indiana Fever fan base. It's unacceptable, honestly, and, and, and there's no place for it. Basketball is headed in, in, in a great direction. You've got 14,000 followers on Twitter. That ain't much of an audience, baby girl. It's an attack on Caitlin Clark. It's no secret that Angel Reese is now trying to paint herself as a hero after years of embracing the villain role but it's too late. The public has already seen through her attempts to rewrite the narrative. Her efforts to tear down Caitlin Clark only highlight her desperation to stay in the conversation, a conversation that Clark dominates with her unmatched talent and popularity. As we look ahead, one thing is undeniable. Caitlin Clark is here to stay and her impact will continue to grow. There are still people who seemingly feel like they just don't want Caitlyn to be a part of it. Because with Caitlyn comes millions and millions and millions of more eyeballs. And with those millions and millions and millions of more eyeballs, unfortunately, is going to come some people who are not nice. The WNBA owes much of its recent success to her. And while some players may try to diminish her accomplishments, the truth speaks for itself. Clark has become the face of the league and no amount of jealousy or false accusations can change that. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates on all the latest WNBA drama and stories. Until next time. You're the number one pick. People are going to go after you because they see greatness in you. What the WNBA is, is measuring one type of greatness against the other greatness. Am I saying it's right that she's being pushed in the back? No, that's foul. Mm -hmm. That's That has no space in the sport, and we all know that. Mm -hmm. White girl is successful. White girl more popular. White girl must be bad. Bad white girl. We see it in politics with bad orange man. And, of course, your fans are racist. You racist! She has taken the two things that, well, most women go to 
in sports when it's not going their way. Shaking their ass and calling people racist. We understand that the world that we live in can easily be defined by white racist. White bad. You're rooting for a white guy. Bad. You're wearing a Make America Great Again hat. Think about that. Make America Great Again. Oh, you don't understand. That has racial connotations. No, it doesn't. When it's not going well for you, claim racism. When it's going well for you, claim victim slash racism. We get it. We understand. And frankly, I just laugh at it.